Hello, everyone. My name is Sari, and I'm an admissions coordinator for the University of New England's Master of Science in Occupational Therapy, or MSOT program. Today, I'll be walking through the process to apply to UNE's MSOT program through OTCAS, or the Occupational Therapy Centralized Application Service. So this is what it would look like if you logged into your OTCAS application. We'll start by looking at the personal information section. Here you can fill out some basic biographic information, information about your citizenship status, your contact information and address, and other details. On the other information tab, you will fill out background information, information about whether you've previously enrolled in an OT program, and you'll have the option to describe um, if COVID-19 impacted you educationally, personally, or professionally, if you choose. You could add information in this section. Next, we will look at the academic history section. In this section, you will indicate any high schools or colleges you've attended. In the colleges attended section, please make sure you add any colleges or universities, community colleges, that you attended at the undergraduate level or higher, even if you only took a single course or took a single course and withdrew from the course. If you attended that institution at all, it needs to be listed here. Failure to list an institution in this section can cause delays in the verification of your application through OTCAS, um, and we will not receive your application until OTCAS has verified it. So just make sure when you are completing this section that you do fill out all colleges um, attended. In this section, you'll indicate the school you attended, your degree that you anticipate receiving or have received, um, the semester system and so forth, whether or not you're still attending the college. In the transcript entry section, you will add all coursework completed at the school exactly as it appears on the official transcripts that you send to OTCAS. For each school you attend, you will add them in this section here. You'll also send your official transcripts to the OTCAS Processing Center, and all information that you add here must match your transcripts exactly. You can add your coursework yourself, or you can have OTCAS fill out this section for you for an additional fee. If you choose to add your own coursework in the transcript entry section, you will add each semester with the term, year, your academic status, and whether or not you completed the semester. We do encourage you to indicate any planned or in-progress coursework if you know what your academic plans will be or if you apply mid-semester, especially if you have one or more prerequisite courses outstanding. Once you have added the semester, you'll add the course information for each specific course. So the code, the course title, again, both exactly as they appear on your transcript, the subject, the number of credits, and the grade you received. If it's a numeric grade, you'll see that OTCAS will convert it to a letter grade, and then you'll see. In the, in the standardized tests section, you can add any test scores here. No test scores are required to apply to UNE's MSOT program, unless English is not your first language, in which case, most applicants would use the TOEFL as a means of demonstrating English language proficiency, which we would require to apply to our graduate programs. Um, so if that's not the case and English is your first language, you don't need to add any standardized tests. If you would like to add any test scores, you would add them in this section and then just make sure to also submit your official score reports. Again, um, this section would not be required unless you are not a native English speaker. In the supporting information section, we'll look at evaluations first. We require a minimum of two letters of recommendation that must be from academic or professional sources, and they must be submitted through this portal here, the OTCAS evaluation portal. To create an evaluation request, you'll click this button. You will input your evaluator's name, email address, the date you would like them to complete your evaluation, and you can include a thank you note um, or any other reminders if you'd like here. It's important um, that you do monitor the status of your evaluation requests. This bar here will turn into a status bar once you actually submit the evaluation request. 
We're not seeing anything here currently because we didn't actually submit a request, um, but you'll want to make sure you're checking that your requests go from uh, requested to accepted and then completed. Um, so once the evaluator accepts your evaluation, you know that they're working on that request. And once you see that the status bar changes to say completed, that means that they have submitted your evaluation. So if you know that you're waiting on evaluations for one or more evaluators, and it's going past the anticipated date you'd hope they complete your evaluation, I would recommend sending follow-up uh, reminders to your evaluators as needed. The next tab we'll look at is the observation hours tab. We don't require observation hours to apply to UNE's OT program. However, observation hours in a human services or healthcare setting are strongly recommended. If you do have observation hours, we would strongly encourage you to add them here. You can enter information about the facility, your experience dates, and then a specific breakdown of hours uh, spent with different patient or client populations. So you'll enter that information here for each observation experience if applicable to you. There are other types of experiences that can be really helpful for our admissions committee to see on your application as well. You can add in the experiences section, anything from employment experiences, extracurricular activities, volunteer experience, leadership experience, and more. So you'll select the type of experience and then add uh, information about the organization, the supervisor you have for that experience, start and end dates, and other details and uh, descriptions of your responsibilities and key roles. You can also add information should you choose about achievements, licenses and certifications, um, and you'll need to complete a release statement. I'm going to click quickly on the documents tab. This is a really important section for OT applicants. This is where you will upload your personal statement. So you can see OTCAS will include a prompt for you uh, to complete an essay response that is called the personal statement. The personal statement should address why you selected occupational therapy as a career and how this degree relates to your immediate and long-term professional goals. This personal statement is a great opportunity to draw on your lived experiences and share more about yourself and your life experiences. Um, this is the most personal way that we have to get to know you short of an interview, which are uh, issued by invitation only, so I strongly encourage you to take your time when drafting your personal statement, put a lot of thought into it, and edit it carefully. It is important to note that your personal statement essay response will be shared across all programs you apply to. So if you are applying to more than one OT program, just an important reminder, um, please don't make your personal statement specific to any one program, as any program you apply to will see that essay response. In the document section, you can also upload supporting documentation for observation hours if you choose. Finally, we'll look at the program materials section. The program materials section is specific to each school or program that you apply to. So we can see UNE is right here. We'll go ahead and click on our program materials. You'll see information about applying to the program. You'll see questions that you need to fill out. Um, specific to each school. So UNE's questions will ask how you heard about our program and whether or not you've ever applied to an OT program or our OT program. Finally, in this section, you will match your prerequisite coursework from your transcript entry that we looked at uh, earlier in the walkthrough video. Each school has specific courses that applicants would need to complete with a certain grade in order to matriculate successfully and be eligible for admission. There's some information about UNE's prerequisite courses here, and then you can see a breakdown of the specific courses that we would require um, with our minimum grade of C or better, no C minus grades accepted. So we're actually going to go through and match these courses that UNE requires with one or more of the courses from our transcript entry. We're going to pick the human anatomy and physiology one prerequisite and hit assign course. Now you can see our coursework that we entered in transcript entry will appear over here. You'll also see additional information about the specific prerequisite that you're matching, such as whether or not it needs to include a lab and any course substitutions that would be accepted, the minimum credits for the course, and the minimum numerical grade that would be required. Again, this would be a C or better. So for UNE, we can see that 
human anatomy, if paired with human physiology, would be an acceptable substitute for uh, human anatomy and physiology one. So we'll select UNE's human anatomy with lab course and match to the anatomy and physiology one prerequisite. Now, when we look at the prerequisite section, you can see that this prerequisite we feel has been accounted for. So if I was applying, this is really for my own benefit, um, just to get a sense of which courses I might have left to complete. It's important to note that when you do apply to UNE's OT program, once we receive your verified application, as part of our preliminary review process, we will review your academic history and we will let you know via email if there are prerequisite courses that we do not see reflected on your application. So this self-matching is for your own benefit. It's a useful tool to get a sense of how many courses you might have left, um, but ultimately we will review your coursework in the Office of Graduate Admissions once your verified application is received. It's important to note that science coursework must be completed within seven years of your anticipated start term. So just be mindful of that when you are matching your prerequisite coursework in this section. Once you have completed all four sections of your OT-CAS application, you will head to the Submit Application page. On this page, you will see total fees, um, which do not go to UNE, these go to the application service, as well as any programs that you're applying to. You can choose to apply to programs individually if maybe you're still working on one or more applications, but have one or more applications complete, you can apply one by one or you can click over here to submit all applications to all programs you're applying to. After you have submitted your application, this check status tab will be really important. Uh, your work's not done once you hit that submit button. We strongly encourage you, as well as keeping an eye on your evaluation requests, to keep an eye on your overall status and your program application status. So for transcripts, you can see how many schools you have sent transcripts for to OTCAS. These are the schools you indicated in your academic history section and how many have been received out of the total number of schools. Please keep an eye on your arrival of transcripts. If there seem to be delays, it's definitely worth reaching out to OTCAS applicant support to just make sure um, there is nothing going on that you should be aware of or no, no documentation went missing. We will need all your official transcripts submitted via OTCAS for the application to be verified by OTCAS and for us to receive it. So it is important that you keep an eye on um, this status bar here. You'll also want to keep an eye on the status bar for your applications. You can see right now our application to UNE's OT program is indicated as in progress because we didn't actually hit submit. If you have submitted your application, please note that schools will not receive your OTCAS application until your status is listed here as verified. So please make sure to monitor the status of your application on this tab until we reach that verified point in case you need to work with OTCAS applicant support for any reason. So that concludes our walkthrough of applying to UNE's MSOT program. I hope you found this information helpful. And if you do have any additional questions as you go through this process, please don't hesitate to reach out to our Office of Graduate Admissions and Recruitment. We also invite you to check out any upcoming campus tours or virtual or on-campus events by going to our website. I look forward to working with you throughout the application process and hope to connect with you soon.